Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We'll call, call the meeting to order for uh, March 3rd, 2020, 7.30 p.m. An adoption of the agenda, resol resolved that the agenda for March 3rd, 2020, regular meeting of council be adopted. Moved by Councillor Gray, second by Councillor Friesen. All in favor? Carried. The confirmation of minutes, be it resolved that the minutes of the February 18th, 2020, regular council meeting and the February 25th committee of the whole meeting be received and approved. Moved by Councillor Gray, second by Councillor White. Further discussion? All in favor? Carried. We have no delegations or hearings. Moving on to communications, we have um, an invite from MNP resolved that the letter of the invitation received from MNP LLP for the fraud trends in public sector presentation on Tuesday, March 17th, be received as information. Moved by Councillor White, second by Councillor Morio. Further discussion? Councillor White? Yeah, I would uh, very much encourage somebody from our administrative staff, more than one, now that I think about it, it's probably important to have more than one, because we attended a seminar on the, this exact topic uh, while well, back in Brandon or Winnipeg. He said, the higher up the food chain, we go with management of money, sometimes that they have more access and ability to create uh, Problem. So I think that's important for our, our team. Some members, members plural, of our team attend that. Teach them how is that what you? Hmm? <laughs> Councilor Gray. <laughs> so you want to teach them how is that what your thinking is? My my thinking is that it, it may be intended for council, so that you know what to look for in the reports. I could be wrong, but so I. I'm going to be away, but I definitely encourage the counselor to my right and anybody else who wants to go to attend. Um, I, I can try to attend that. I will try to attend that. Um, Whoever I, should hear and go should go. Pardon me? Whoever can go should go. Absolutely. So I invite the rest of you to as well try to make that happen. Any further discussion? All in favor? carried. Um, 5.2, we have a complaint. Um, I see that Mr. Poole has looked into that complaint. Mr. Poole, any comments on that? Uh, just just that the, the threat to go to the regulators of the province, I figured council would want to take a look at it that we were dealing with. That's the reason it made the agenda. <clears throat> okay. Any other comments? <clears throat> further discussion on that one? Councillors? No. Moving on, 5.3 letter from the Swan Valley Crisis Center resolved that the audited financial statements for the year ending tw uh, March 31st, 2019 and 2018 to 2019 statistics from the Swan Valley Crisis Center be received as information moved by Councillor Gray, second by Councillor Morio. Further discussion? Is there a uh, request for funds that's associated with this? It's for you now. Okay. This one was only received for information. Any further, see what you're saying. any further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. Um, reports of committees. Director of Public Works. Be it resolved that the director of director to the director to Public Works report be <coughs> moved by Councillor Friesen, second by Councillor. Delorier and Mr. Poole. Any questions? Mr. De Councillor Delorier. Um, <coughs> call from the resident with the greater issue with the slope. Is that is that fourth we're talking? No, uh, no. River Road. Okay, and they, they, they maintain that for us? Like the RM maintains that for us? No. It's done by accident. Uh, okay. But the grade is still between two and four percent, which is acceptable. Okay. Councillor Friesen. I'm just wondering what Main Street is. Somebody going to fix that? Or they were out there this morning, but we can, like, I'm, we've, we've told the guys they've got to be on the daily to, because okay. it's Main Street, until we can break up the cold mix pile and get cold mix asphalt. Thanks. Councillor White. Uh, three things. Uh, they're looking at prices in hot water pressure 
washers for the pool. What is that about? Uh, that was that was a hot water pressure washer we used for thawing culverts and our sewer services. So that was a, there, that's a reason why our storm sewer budget has dropped six thousand dollars and are operating in twenty twenty. If we purchased that last year, we we demoed a unit and 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 saved a considerable amount of hours because of how fast it worked with uh, and just how mobile it was. But uh, Instead of having the back truck doing everything, we have that second unit, and it's just a small little hot, hot water pressure washer on a trailer uh, with a hose, and, and that, that's all it is, is for thawing out sewers and, and culverts, but uh, we put it on our trailer, and away we go. It's in the operating budget for 2020, which hasn't passed. So. We didn't buy it. We just demoed Getting it. Getting prices in. We, we demoed it last year. It's in the budget for 2020 right now. But the budget hasn't passed, so we're getting prices. Okay, so it would be the same device. Yeah. Okay, the other one is the hot tub repair status. Where are we with that? We are working on it. We're making phone calls, having people um, mm -hmm. about that sort of thing. So we are, we're on it. We just don't have a final okay. solution. The third thing, uh, I was reading that article uh, where you're sharing with Portage people in the dark and how when they went out, their power went out in February for like a week, 10 days, and the lessons they had learned. And I'm wondering if any of the lessons they learned would, could be applicable to the town of Swan River. And uh, do we have the abilities to prevent that happening to us? And if it happened to us, we have the abilities to solve those issues as they found in Portage. I know the, the manager of the wastewater department personally through the, through the MWWA, so yeah, I, I talked to her and we would be in the same boat as they were. We don't like, even their EOC, like the, they dealt, they dealt with issues that, uh, that no one really, you know, the, all the small things, the, every tree over three feet went down, every hydro line was across roads, so you couldn't get your guys to your lift stations. The door in the public workshop was electric, so they, they couldn't get in the, Oh, wow. So that, like, when you think about it, if you if you don't have power, you have to deal with those things. So, so, and you know, I, I try and compare it to our emergency, and we we had all of our manpower and our tools and our equipment. At, you know, we had to assess the problem and fix it. When they, you know, the problem wasn't theirs; they were they were given those conditions. So it was uh, it was a really interesting paper, but uh, could could. We could definitely take advantage of the lessons they've learned. I could maybe That's what get, I was thinking about mostly. I could maybe get a, a list from the city of Portage just to, just maybe their key foundation things that they've learned and, and would like to be in place for. I encourage you to do that. Maybe share it with us if we got to be, be of any help. Okay, sure. Too. Councilor Delorey. The on uh, Councilor Lloyd's comment on the sewer jet right, on the uh, hot water. Does the the vac truck's a dual combo unit with a sewer jet. Does it not have a hot water option? It does, yeah. Oh, but it doesn't get hot enough, or? Well, no, it gets hot enough, but the the hose on it is huge, oh, okay. so it can only do the bigger services. Okay. The one on this one, we put smaller hoses on it. So the big one we use for culverts mostly, and okay. this is really good for for residential. Okay. Councilor Gray. Three things. I'm not sure if they're all yours. Um, could we just find another company and demo another pressure? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, near our yard on third or fourth there, I've had a couple of citizens complain about the speed, particularly of RV, all vehicles, but particularly our vehicles. Can we look at whether or not we can do something about that area? Yeah. Thank you. Yes. The, the second. The third thing, second real thing, is about the pool. How close are we to our, our <laughs> I don't mean to be harsh, but yeah. you know, given it's now what, almost a year over we wanted it. So we did have, I can't remember the name of the company. The hot tub. Big boys? Yeah, is it big boys? Yeah. Anyways, they came in. And they couldn't do what we what they initially said they were going to do, so uh, 
we've gone back to a mechanical contractor who who basically said he wouldn't do the uh, like I guess looking into the HVAC side, but we've gone to a mechanical contractor who said he wouldn't do it without a, an engineer on on staff. So he went to the the same company that produced our our assessment, and uh, right now it it's high, I guess, the number that he got from that, that company. So me and Charles and Patty are just talking about, again, our options moving forward on what's the best way to move forward on this. Okay. Did, can we put that on some agenda because um, and, and it, it's now been almost a year and we had a report more than a year ago that said that there's long-term damage if we don't do something about a number of things, including particularly the HVAC. And so I'm particularly concerned with three things. The first is, um, in fact, that damage, which ruins a long-term facility. Uh, the second is that it impairs our lawsuit in the sense that we're failing to mitigate damages. And the third is that it makes the use of the pool more problematic. And so for all of those reasons, we should get on with this. And, and even if we're going to make a conscious decision to do nothing, that may or may not be the decision. At least we will have made a conscious decision. What I feel like we're doing right now is it's some kind of holding pattern where we're not doing anything. And, and turning a blind eye to it is not a helpful thing. It is a long-term recipe for disaster. So. No, we, we, we totally agree. We know that... Uh, like we had that RFP go out for, for the fixes, right. a portion of the fixes go out, but that was pulled amongst the administration to, to try and find a cheaper way, but uh, we understand exactly what you're saying. All, all I'm saying is can we put it on something where uh, preferably a day out here so that we can get on with concluding this? Because one way or another, we have to do something. I don't, I don't, like I said, I don't even care if we come to a decision that's too expensive to bother with and we're going to take the risk. But I do, I don't want to be two more years down the road. We're still in the same boat and we've just never discussed it. And and that would be you know, negligent. Yeah. That's okay. the word. Like I know we, the more details we tell you, the more questions you guys have, but, but like what we're looking at now is, is possibly going back to a, a consulting firm. If we can't get a mechanical contractor to do it without a consulting firm, we want to go to a consulting firm and narrow down some of the scope okay. that we think is necessary. So, which committee, the whole or other time, are we going to put it on? I've got a note to put it on the committee of the whole, like our next agenda. We don't have a meeting set, but I put it on there when we talk about our next committee of the whole. Next Tuesday. Are we doing one next Tuesday? We should. Even, even uh, just for this, it needs to be talked about sooner or later. Oh, um, yeah, I'm, I'm maybe driving back, but I, I it's my it, it's fine. Any further discussion, Mr. Gray? Was that everything? No, no those were the two items, okay. three items, but only two really. Yeah. Um, the advertisement for the landfill manager is there, a, does it include the secondary pricing we've talked about for doing? Pick up as well, like an additional pricing. Is that it includes a mandatory price for the hours that are currently there, uh, re reduced hours that will match mine, oh, and yeah. then an option for the solid waste collection. Nice. Okay. Thank you. Any further questions? <clears throat> All in favor? It's carried. And moving on to other reports, I have nothing for that one, but council. Um, and town manager report uh, and councillor Friesen. I'll start with you today. Um, nothing other than community care. I had a meeting last night and I have another one on Thursday. Um, they're really busy people. Uh, Lauren Monroe is their program coordinator and she's uh, already arranging some stuff to help us out with uh, Canada Day. Um, Making an application to Communities in Blue to apply for our registration and have the judges come again. Um, that's it. Thank you very much. 
Councilor Morio. Um, last Thursday, I attended the business uh, consortium meeting. Um, again, it's very well attended. Uh, a lot of businesses and some stakeholders in the community that come together and discuss uh, a number of the issues and training and way things people can work together. So it's encouraging that um, the community is working together on a number of issues. Um, and on Friday, I attended the Provincial Municipal Justice Advisory Committee in Winnipeg. Um, a lot of um, discussion there on the police review and um, some other issues uh, regarding justice and that, uh, that was in cameras. But uh, it was a very well uh, attended meeting and a lot of discussion there. Um, and we were just uh, waiting um, to see what the results are of the Police Act review. Coming out. So. Okay, thank you. Councillor Delorey. I uh, had a meeting uh, with the 4 H group regarding their uh, request or they're wanting to partner with us on a CT scan fundraiser. Uh, that looks like it's going to go ahead. Uh, there'll be more details coming out with that uh, regarding that once we have the uh, lottery license finalized. Um, so that's very, uh, it's kind of the kickoff to uh, to some grassroots fundraising for that project. On the 24th, I had a library board meeting. And now a few months ago, I had talked about how we were on the library board. We had the wages were kind of all over the place. We brought in a and, and they didn't make sense in a lot of cases as far as how long people had been there, jobs that people were doing, uh, whether you worked in Benito or Swan River, it was just kind of all over the place. We brought in a, 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 a scale, it's, it's structured, it's, it's manageable now, but it did cost a little bit to bring this in to, you know, to realign everybody. So what that looks like in terms of our contribution, I think we, I think we were at 86,000 last year. Our contribution will be with if if we go ahead uh, going ahead with this new wage scale. Our contribution would be ninety three, so we can either accept that, or the, uh, the board is willing to look at in order to make sure this this goes ahead, uh, pulling out a reserve for for a one to two year basis to, to kind of uh, cushion the shock of, of of this wage scale. So I I guess uh, the. the the reserve is the library reserve is sitting at a roughly around a hundred thousand. So they they were thinking of pulling out, you know, up to seven or eight thousand each year to uh, to cushion that. But I guess I bring it forward to, to hear what you guys thoughts are on that. Um, and I see Councillor Gray had a kind of a question, so I guess I can take a question yeah. on that. Sure. I can. Go, we can wait till you're done. Go okay. Ahead. Um, and then. We had a district rec meeting. Uh, topic of discussion was hiring a programmer, but then there was also a there's a subsequent proposal going to be looked at. So I think it's too too early to talk about a programmer at this point. There's a few irons in the fire, so to speak. Um, but we'll we'll be having a, another district rec meeting in another month's time. But I, I have to say, out of all my years on that board, it was one of the most thrilling but it was one of the most exciting times I left feeling really good about things after after that and you know it's a real promising pro proposition that might be coming forward we'll have more details on that uh, soon to, soon to come and I think uh, that was it for me councillor gray you had uh, a question I think for mr. DeLorean oh um, I take it your recommendation is that we just up the end I, I, I guess the concern wasn't necessarily for this table. It was more so to make sure that maybe other partners uh, didn't stop progress, so to speak. But so I guess so I guess I'm fine with upping the ante. I mean, it's going from 86 to 93, um, and it the, the wages at the library are not astronomical. astronomical. So, it, but it, it does just put things into a system. Which it wasn't before. Well, to the then to Mr. Chairman, to the Mr. Chairman, to the uh, councillor. My view is that we should pay our bills 
that, that there's a reserve in the library which is necessary for the purposes of a reserve. And we, you know, I, I, like I, I may, if you tell me that there's too much reserve and that they're going to pay the reserve down as a logical extension of what they should do, fair enough. But that's not what I understood. What I understood was the reserve is there and so we could squeeze into it. And I have, but that just offends me to my core. It's what we what got us in trouble before. If it costs us $93,000 to run a library, then let's pay $93,000 and pay the library. That's my view. Go ahead. I, I guess I'm ag agnostic either way. As, you know, as long as this this new system can can go ahead. But uh, I, the the reserve. One of the reasons the board, I guess, was willing to look at the reserve option is because one of the reasons the reserve exists is from a number of years, probably over the last five years, of coming drastically under budgets, budget specifically in payroll expenses. So the reserve was built up because of not you know not paying out wages whether it be through vacancies or that that kind of thing. So it, the, the reserve wasn't specifically built to be a reserve. It just happened to become one through lack of paying payroll. So I, I don't know if that changes anybody's perspective, but I just wanted to throw that out there. Oh, yeah, okay. But my view is this. Firstly, the library board should do a review of their budget and say, this is the reserve we need and these are the reasons we need it. If you don't need the reserve, then to the extent you don't need it, use it. If the reserve is a reasonable reserve so that there isn't going to be bumps in the road if one of our partners withdraws or some crazy thing happens, then um, then which I think which I think is not an excessive I mean for a for a library to have a hundred thousand dollar reserve, I mean if something comes up that we want to acquire that's worth something, they've got a reserve. They, uh, there's no reason not to have a cushion. And I think it's not unwieldy. I think us all of our programs to have those kind of reserves. So and if it's only seven thousand extra dollars, and I know that we have to pass that on and don't have to look at it, but really that's to me it doesn't change my mind when I owe unless the board comes back and says we don't need the reserve, in which case that it should be used up only because it should be used up. And I trust that that board will make the right decision with what they're going to present to this council. So we will look at look at it at that time for sure. Councillor, any other questions for Mr. Delore? Okay, Councillor White. I'm not sure if I brought this before or not, that at the sport fish thing, which may or may not be directly related to Council, Swan Valley Sport Fish wants to establish a, a kid's pond. I talked about that one before? Well, regardless, if somebody has some land, they like to donate close to town or in town, so young people who can't or don't have the opportunity to fish, we'd be certain, certainly willing to be involved with that from cash or manpower. And I, that's something I think strongly of. Uh, I went to the, the committee of the whole meeting and looking at crime solutions, and uh, I thought that went really, really well. Uh, the business consortium meeting went to that also, and the meth was uh, the number one issue, and it's a, it's, it's a big deal, and uh, hopefully the solutions will be found. Part of the solution will be the citizen patrol. I want to compliment Councillor Mario for all the work he's done. I believe you have some 30-some people signed up, so now you're doing uh, criminal record checks and insurance issues, things like that. So it, it can happen. It's overnight. It, it's going to happen, and I want to thank Council Morial a lot for that. I was talking to Minister Wojcik today about uh, doctor recruiting, and he led me to to know that he is meeting with the Minister of Health shortly. I think this week, uh, Cameron Friesen. We'll talk about the CT scan. So we certainly haven't given up on that one. So that's about it for me. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor White. Councillor Gray. Um, well, we had another meeting of RISE last night, which was surprisingly cordial. Um, you will know that the mayor, in his meeting with the heads of council, um, was told that um, I, on behalf of this council, was the one who suggested we shouldn't use a headhunter, which came as a shock to both me and to Councillor Tony, since we were the two who proposed it and advocated for it but in any event everybody's now on board and we managed to find three volunteers from the board to lead a committee to determine who's going to be on uh, which which head and firm we're going to engage um, and so that's good news and everybody seemed okay with the, uh, the numbers and with the process um, i have to say it was um, 
the shortest and the most cordial meeting in RISE that I've been at for a while. Um, I met as well with Settlement Services. Uh, we have a huge new project. We have some issues with our lease. There are a bunch of little things. And, and this is sort of a general thing to the administration. Can we get organized and into either all net or out to counselors? Every organization that we belong to or support, participate in, can we get the Constitution, the agreements all in place? Because uh, I find myself listening to somebody talking, I say, well, how, what does it say about this? And nobody can find, and, and I point to uh, Councilor Glory happened to have a RISE uh, agreement uh, when we were talking about one thing, and, and he said, well, what's the Constitution saying? Well, I don't know, nobody even had it. And he said, well, I've got it. And, and so I think we need to put all those in place so that whenever somebody's on a committee, you can look at the Constitution and know what the heck it's supposed to be doing. Because there were some, well, there were some surprising things that happen in every organization where, because you get into a pattern of doing things, you just assume them. Uh, so if we can do that, if we, I don't know how we do that, but over the course of the next few months, if we can get everything so that there's sort of a list of all the things we do and, and a, a, a little category and all of the supporting documents that are there. Yeah, we can put it all on that. So that would be very helpful. Um, I, I think we should actually talk about the Recreation Commission thing a little bit in camera. I have some other information that may be useful. Uh, but it's not something I want to publicly badly about um, And lastly, um, I, I note that this come not this weekend, but next weekend for our next council meeting, the Bantam, the Parkland Bantam Provincial, or Bantam um, uh, Triple, I guess, uh, team is hosting the provincials here, uh, first for here. Um, we have five or six members from here. Um, we, I can tell you of a number of, of the members of that team are being highly scouted, um, and um, both colleges and junior teams are scouting them. It's going to be a huge thing. They've got every room booked from Roblin to I don't know where, Cowan. Um, so uh, if there's any space anybody has open, um, then uh, and they've got a ton of volunteers going. So it's going to be an exciting time. We should do what we can to support them. But um, with that, those are the meetings I've attended. So, other than the committee of the whole, which I'm sure you remember, Board on. You weren't there. I was so there. No, I, won't. I won't. Uh, we, we were, were part way through the first, we did the first of five pieces, sort of, on, <laughs> on action items for the strategic plan. Um, so at that scale, in another four months, we'll have a, a, a formal strategic plan that will be implementable, sort of. So. Thank you, Councillor Gray. Councillor Morial. Um, this is maybe more of a question regarding to the administration re rise. I don't think we've, as this council has formally passed a resolution to support the three-year because we're waiting on Minnesota Sportsman to send us the, have we received that and are we, um, so from what I understand, like I guess so, the three other councils have passed the resolution, do we get a copy of somewhere and put it on the next agenda and get it done so that we're not the outliers again well, on, on that? So. Councillor Gray? There's a challenge with that. I you'll recall from my last meeting. And so, um, Again, it's my understanding that the mayor uh, met with, he's not here, but I'm sure he would have reported this, but with the heads of council and, and came to some form of understanding that um, it, that everybody agreed they were going to pay whatever was um, sent by RISE. I suspect that the intention is that the RISE um, board now, by three people who've already, three councils who've already um, passed assessments based on the 2016 assessment and um, I think we will have a I will have a hard time voting for that even though it's only a few hundred dollars it, it philosophically offends me to have people perpetually not fulfill the
fundamental purpose and agreement. So um, we can put it on, but right. I'd rather deal with it sooner than later instead of kicking that can down the road. Let's bring it on head on and deal with it. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Thanks. Thank you. Um, Mr. Poole, anything to, to add? Anything that you other? Anything further? Usually we don't have to call on you twice, but I will if you have anything. Uh, no, I'm sure Patty would agree that Carmel is doing a great job in the office, catching on really quick. Perfect. I think that needs to be said, but uh, nothing else really. Ms. Henkelman, anything from you today? Uh, no, Mr. Cole, I attended the business facility and he did a presentation of crime there as well. Um, we were working on the repair stuff and yeah, we had the strategic planning Perfect. Thank you. And from myself, um, I was unable to attend a couple of the meetings in the last couple of weeks. I just have a lot on my plate at the moment, um, but I'm planning to get back in, into those meetings and hopefully have a little more time on my hands. Um, just to, to mention that we are hosting the Bantam Hockey um, tournament here next weekend where we will see um, so I'm told about 950 out of town guests players parents um, coming into our community um, so just a, a shout out to our community to for an influx of of people coming to visit and, and if you see strangers around feel free to to tour them around and show them the sites tell them where to go and things like that um, sure Councillor Friesen just talking hockey. Friday is the first game in the playoffs for the San Peters. That's right. Absolutely. Just thought I would mention that. Thank you very much. Um, and then just with Rise, I attended that meeting as well. Um, some good things are coming with that. I would like administration to find out, though, why that letter from Minnetonas didn't arrive, how other councils did pass a resolution. Uh, without that information, how that, and to, to ensure that the information that was passed at each of those councils is, is the same, because it was under my understanding that the resolution was to be the same at every council, and why that isn't and why we didn't receive anything worries me a little bit more. Um, that is all I have for uh, the reports thank you very much moving on new business 7 7.1 a conditional use 1 uh, 2020 resolved that conditional use application 1 2020 to allow a secondary suite in the basement at 304 hill avenue be received and that the notice of a of public hearing for april 7th 2020 at 7 30 p.m be posted and advertised moved by councillor Delorier, second by Councillor Morio. Discussion? Just Councillor Gray? Just uh, if we can get the applicant to fill out a little more detail as to the nature of what's being proposed. Uh, I'm sure that there, there is more that somebody can put the free secondary suite. I, I, I have a, a notion of what that means, but just how that will look. Ms. Henkelman, you can request from the applicant yeah. further information. You mean, just to be clear, you want like plans? Well, no, I, I don't care. Well, I mean, obviously, if you have plans, that's even better. But just what's the size of the unit that's going in? What, what's the size of the house? How would that would it be an external access? Yeah. Those kind of things. Which is just, I, I'm sure that he has all of those plans. It's not a, I don't want drawings. I just want to know that it's thought through and that it's not going to be a nuisance to neighbors. And no doubt it will be, but it would be easier on the 7th if we have all that, okay. if there's an objection. Are you suggesting to pass the resolution, table the resolution until you get that res uh, no, the information no, no. you're okay with? No, no. Uh, I'm prepared to accept it and move the resolution. I'm just saying that for the hearing on the 7th, we should have that material so that if someone raises an issue, we okay. have it. We don't have we don't have that embarrassing situation where somebody raises something and somebody has to respond. We should have it in advance so there's no dispute. 
Okay. Further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 7.2, motion to cancel agreement resolved that the water supply agreement signed August 17th, 2010 between the town of Swan River and the rural municipality of Swan Valley West, previously the rural municipality of Swan River be terminated and that, that notices of intent to terminate agreement be sent to the Public Utilities Board for approval and the rural municipality of Swan Valley West for information. Moved by Councillor Gray, second by Councillor Friesen, discussion, Councillor White. And, and what is the reason for this? Uh, Why are we canceling uh, agreement? Well, they Council were used it the first time they were used it for 10 years. Uh, and secondly, um, the agreement, we already have a loss in what we supply. The agreement provides that we pay them, with, they, we charge their ratepayers the same thing we would end up subsidizing. And they're not going to move off of that. And so we've not had great success with Swan Valley weather. That's what the agreement said. So we, we've not had great success. So I think we should uh, renegotiate. Councillor I, I just have a question or comment that we that our rates already have a loss built into built in them. Is that what I understand? We subsidize. The taxpayers don't subsidize the like our water rates even for our own tax uh, rate payers. Is that, is that what you're saying? Yeah. Our, so our no, it's it's fully funded. The water rates pay for the utility itself. We don't transfer anything from from tax money into the utility. Mm -hmm. Capital. Sometimes. We haven't tra even capital. We haven't transferred in probably. It's been a, a while, long but, time. Yeah, like five years at least. Well, we, we've been talking about going to public utilities board because of the rates, and I thought we had a transfer last year. No. We transfer from we transfer from the utility to the 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 big budget, the town budget, to in order to pay for capital, but it's still the utility paying for it. Okay. Yeah. So our our rates fully what we we increased them probably twenty percent just two years ago to, to for that situation. We ran two years of deficits and uh, and even then the the new rates paid back those deficits. So the, the, the utility okay. is fully funded. Okay. So, so the two things I heard, one, it has ha nothing's happened for 10 years. I have equipment in my house I don't use for 10 years. That doesn't mean it isn't valid. There isn't a good term. And second reason I heard is because we're subsidizing, and apparently that's not true either. So until, in my mind, until we sat down as a group, as I'm not aware of us ever doing, and looked over that agreement, uh, I'm not sure. Some of you, have you ever seen it, uh, Deputy Mayor? I. I've seen it, um, and we've had discussions about it we, uh, as, as a team. As okay, a I must have went away at that one meeting. But to me, it, it, that was a sign in good faith with, with the arm of Swan Valley West. They don't have water. We were going to sell them water, as I recall, help me if I'm wrong, here at the same price our constituents paid, and uh, hypothetically then there's no loss of money to our entity is what I've heard. So I, in an attempt to show good faith to our partners, water's a big deal. Some of these people don't have water and it hasn't happened for 10 years because of the change in management, for lack of a better term, with Swan Valley West, perhaps a new perspective. I'd like to sit down with our partners, Swan Valley West, and see what they think about it before we terminate it. Okay. Mr. Cool. Uh, I was there when this, when this thing was drafted in the I'm just going to let you guys know, if, from what I recall, the three main issues during this. Uh, the first one being, if we did enter into a water agreement with the RM, would we service 100% of our own ratepayers first? We have a percentage of our own ratepayers that do not have water hookups, and that was an issue that we would say go south when the north town whatever doesn't even have water and we're hooking up outside municipalities. The second, uh, it was just the point under withdrawal of water, the town and municipality may negotiate on the withdrawal of water anytime the municipality reaches 85% of the total, total daily volume allowed in the three month billing period. That does that does relate to the, to the 200 <laughs> gallons per day. 
but council needs to know that when we reach 80 percent of our plant capacity we will be going forward with the plant upgrade and it, there's not a lot in here that says that they're going to be any part of that so that is a big open hole in this and then the, the third one was the the uh the cost share of the pipes to get it from the plant to the to the service point at the municipality. If, if there was a breakdown there, should the RM be paying or at least contributing to the capital to replace those pipes, giving them the water? That was the, another contentious issue. Councillor Delorey. Um, what, what's our, what capacity are we at right now at the water treatment plant? Between 55 and 58. Okay, um, and I guess any, I, I mean, if the treatment plant needs to be upgraded, but any upgrades, those are captured within the rates, and they, should, and they should be. Um, and, and that's why we need to make sure that we're diligent in always looking ahead at what our rates need to be to capture whatever is in our upcoming five-year plan as far as, as far as upgrades. So, so those, they will pay those costs when they buy water from us, just like you or I will pay those costs when we buy water from the town. That is true. Um, and does the agreement outline uh, any of the, your other concerns as far as uh, the actual piping to get it to the service point? No, that was the number one. Well, I shouldn't say number one. Number one was the our residence, but that was one of the contentious issues was, was the upgrading. That was the CAO at the time's major issue. Of, of the RM contributing to capital upgrades on the pipes that the RM received water from. Councillor White. So the sale of water to RM customers, hypothetically, should bring funds to the community? It our depends costs. what we set our rates at. Yeah, whatever, depending on what we set. So I think it's not irrelevant that people on the edge of, within our, our, our boundaries don't have water. That's really important to me, of course it is but I'm not sure that's connected. If there's a pipe on the edge of town, I don't know it's that easy, and they hook up to the pipe on the edge of the town, and they're a truck from our town on, that's all their baby. They, as I recall, they pay for any repairs, whatever, so they pay for that. So we can sell them water, and hopefully there's some monies in there where, where we have some fund put away for fixing, repairing funds. I don't know how we can go wrong personally, So, but. The, the questions are telling me that none of us are really sure. Obviously, it was discussed at a meeting. I wasn't there. I would still like to see what our partners, I'd still like to spend, I think I was talking, and uh, maybe a, stat, a, a committee of the whole where we have that contract sitting in front of us again and uh, talk about it. Councillor Delorean. I, I guess it has gone to committee of the whole. Like with the, we, I think that about six months ago, we all got emailed out this contract to, to read it over and and have, what issues we have. I guess, I'm not, I'm not opposed to selling them water and I don't think that this contract is necessarily the greatest as, as per what Councillor Gray has pointed out, the, the actual flaws in it. And one of the flaws is the fact that like, what, what, we're, what we're talking about doing here tonight is it's not really even clear how you get out of it. And that's, that's so I guess if we do pass this, I'd, I'd like to pass it with the letter going to Swan Valley West saying, because it's a three year window, we still have to sell the water for the next three years. If we, get, if we give notice now, saying we've given notice, we're giving you notice that we're canceling within three years, but we hope within the next three years we can renegotiate and come to some sort of agreement so there'll be no lapse in service, even though they're not taking any service from us right now. But that, if it passes tonight, I would like a letter to go out that, that, that says we want to renegotiate because we have issues with the, with the contract and there, we, we don't intend for there to be any lapse in service because there's three years under this contract that, we still have to, that we're still obligated to service them. Councillor Gray was first, I do believe, and then Councillor Morio. I'll defer to my Councillor Morio. Um, besides some of the concerns that I brought forward, I have one of the concerns, like looking here, that there creates uncertainty is that we sell the, the, the municipality water, but the bill goes to the municipality for them to, however they collect it. Um, dealing with this municipality with no um, offense intended, but their track record of paying bills um, or trying to change the formula when they don't like the invoice or their share of the costs um, seems to change. So I think this is an opportunity here, as Council Gloria says, where we're not providing them any water, 
but we got time where we can firm up some of these issues where we're not uh, and get better clarity in and even if there's a like a dispute resolution clause in some of those things or whatever um, for it so Councilor Gray I uh, as a as a uh, nod to Councillor White I, I have no objection it was me that at the last committee of the whole said well where are we with this because we've been discussed it at least two previous times but I have no problem with going back to the committee of the whole to talk about it I, I didn't actually think we were going to bring out a lot of there were a lot of discussions in the committee of the whole about why we might want to do this and I think they're not entirely appropriate to talk in open council so um, in the it, it, well I'm going to suggest it go to committee of the whole that it be tabled for both one meeting uh, and go to the committee of the whole and maybe at that meeting we'll table it further to have a meeting with, with the RM I, I I don't know but I, I certainly don't want any counselor to feel like we haven't that they haven't had a reason, an opportunity to discuss it but I the plan was exactly as council Florier expressed which is we're going to we've got we have to give three years notice like that's one of the weird things about this um, we have anybody has to give three years notice um, to get out of it and and which is an incredibly long period of time um, and we want to there are some issues about the contract so there's there's two ways that we can add, from what I'm hearing the discussion is that we can go ahead with the resolution and add a, add a, add a piece in there that says um, a letter to formally request negotiations um, on a new contract or we can option two is to table it to another cow meeting so that's what the two resolutions or two options we have councillor white have we broached this conversation with our partners are they aware that we're considering it or council was considering it? not that i'm aware of i think it would be just morally acceptable to say hey we're having some issues with the contract as it is do you guys want to want to chat about it or there what do you think about the contract because there are a lot of new players over there too i i guess that's that's a fair reason but um and just to kind of reiterate what what we what was discussed was that there is that option within the three year window to renegotiate that um, but cancel the existing contract we're not saying that we're not going to supply them water we're just going to create a new contract with them together um, so, uh, but I, I totally understand that it's up to the what council wants to do with the decision. So I'd do like I? Have you table again. We have a motion to table it. Is the first and or the mover and the second are okay I'm, with that? I'm, I'm, it doesn't matter to me. I, I I'm prepared to do anything. I, I just wanted, to, like I said, to me the broad nature came back from the committee of the whole, and and I just want us to be moving on it with because otherwise what's going to happen is we're going to get caught up in this, and then it's going to be impossible. To, I mean, once we're actually delivering water, we're going to be in a difficult position to renegotiate that. I accept that. Mover and seconder. Mover was Councillor Gray, seconder was Councillor. Would you rather move? Like to marry me? Fill that second. Councillor Friesen, okay to table it? If I may. Mr. Poole. Just to, like, I, I think we should have already been in this agreement providing rural water. The administration is definitely in support of rural water. But just so council knows, if they apply for a grant, receive money, we're in this. So this is the agreement we're going to get. Probably not going to be a negotiation. So if we want to change something, we just keep that in mind that this is the time. We do have a motion of tabling. And I got a call to, sorry, go ahead. Just, oh, just go ahead. All in favor of the of tabling sure it's tabled to the next cow meeting well it's tabled this or to, to, to the, the next council meeting and we'll be on the cow meeting for discussion yes so we're good to bring it back to the next council meeting yeah but it'll be so moved move to discussion at the next cow meeting as well yes council would, you, would it be appropriate then for our council to drop a note to the arm swan valley west that this is being discussed if they have any input please consider i i think that we should wait till we discuss it at the committee okay. of the whole yeah, and well, then we'll come to that conclusion okay thank you 
Uh, moving on, 7.3, Communities in Bloom. Resolved that the Town of Swan River participate in 2020 Provincial Edition of Manitoba Communities in Bloom at the $400 registration and the $400 registration fee be approved for payment. Moved by Councillor Gray. I assume Councillor Friesen wants to move it, actually. Yeah, I'm good. Moved by Councillor Friesen, second by Councillor Gray. Further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. Thank you. <clears throat> Uh, moving on, resolved that council be authorized to attend the G5 meeting held on February 3rd in Minnetonas. Moved by Councillor White, second by Councillor Morio. All in favor? It's carried. Attendant, uh, 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 sorry, <laughs> resolved that Mayor Jacobson and Councillor White be authorized to attend meeting with Chief Janai and Councillor Chartrand at Saptoyak Cree Nation on February 13th, 2020. Moved by Councillor White, second by Councillor Friesen. All in favor, further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. <clears throat> 7.6, resolved that Council be authorized to attend meeting in Manitonas on January 27th, 2020 to discuss rise with the other Valley Councils. Moved by Councillor Mario, second by Councillor Delorier. Further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 7.7. <clears throat> Resolved that $1,000 annual grant um, to the Swan Valley Crisis Center be approved for payment for 2020. Moved by Councillor Friesen, second by Councillor White. Further discussion? Councillor Gray. Can, can we have a list of all of the grants like this that we do and and can we sort of have some kind of history on them um, I, uh, I don't know how to put this without just saying it so I'm just going to say it I, I think it's embarrassing like like a thousand dollars for the crisis center seems to me at eighty three dollars a month incredibly small and 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 the if they need it, I mean I'm not saying I'm not anxious necessarily to spend more money but I just think you get into these pro forma things where you just we, we give them the thousand dollars, we give them a thousand dollars, and nobody even thinks that maybe we should relook at it. And and I think we should look at all of the list as part of our budgeting process and say, are there someone here that we no longer are prepared to provide for, and are there others that we should provide more for? And shouldn't there be a process for people applying and saying, here's what we need and here's what we're going to do with it? I think that would be a, a great idea for discussion at our next committee of a whole meeting for sure. I, I'm prepared to agree with the motion. I, I think I, the thousand dollars is so obvious that I, it's just I, I think we should look at it. Further discussion on this one on this resolution. All in favor? It's carried. Um, the fire protection and purchase service agreement whereas the fire protection and purchase service agreements with the municipality of Minnetonas Bozeman have a term termination date of December 31st 2019 and whereas the councils have been unable to meet to discuss new agreements therefore be it resolved that the town of Swan River extend both the cream both agreements pardon me until such time that new agreements can be negotiated moved by councillor Delorier, second by Councillor White. Discussion, Councillor Delorier. One in the hands or two in the bush. Sign for another year. <laughs> Councillor <laughs> Morio. Um, well, I'm in favor of extending it for one more year. Um, maybe we, uh, looking at uh, Mr. Poole's report and then hearing from uh, our CFO, Mr. Ganita, before that. The hours in that agreement for both of those parties uh, are very, very inappropriate or there are some challenges to that. Um, maybe we can make a recommendation or proposal um, since if we pull those two items out for the interim and replace it with um, Mr. Fedorchuk's advice on their request, like as he's doing now, but just make it a more formal thing because the, like you're doing with what he's doing with uh, the Bozeman Fire Department providing guidance, and I know Minnetonas Bozeman, their CEO, contacts him once in a while for advice on that. So maybe just formalize 
we can formalize that in the replacement uh, of those two articles. Because I, I don't know, Mr. Poole, have you been subsequently been to Minnetonas Bozeman for as per the the agreement? No, we struggled heavily to, right. to get the training in place. Exactly. So yeah. even regardless of the hours, like at the time there was, you know, pretty good pressure to right. for the reasoning of the agreement. And and then that's the same art or same reasoning that Mr. Ganita had brought forward was him just to show up there for a day to do something without any background or stuff was pretty much a, a futile waste of time, his time for it. So instead of having it an agreement, but we also have some other relationship that's going on and if we can maybe just extend that, formalize it to give, potentially him the authority to do that without um, getting caught by um, for doing something that he shouldn't be doing, is that if both parties are going to just flip that fort or something. It's just a thought. Clear as mud, Miss Engelman. So you want to flip the fire department hours for the public works and CFO hours? Am I clear on that? Well, just remove the, the public works and CFO hours in exchange for fire department advice as requested from their CAO. It's just a suggestion. Councillor Gray, then Councillor Delorier. Oh, perfect. Councillor Delorier. I, I guess I appreciate what Councillor Moore is saying, and, and you know I'm really concerned by by Mr. Poole's report. I think we we need to look at those things, but I think the, what I'm imagining their intention to be is we're already a quarter of the way through the year. We haven't even met once to start to go. As soon as we, you know, once we start changing it, well, we're into a negotiation, mm -hmm. and it's going to take you know we'll probably be three quarters of the way through the year by the time we get somewhere. They're mm -hmm. saying. While we're doing that, let's have an agreement in place. Okay. So, so I, I, I don't know. I just go back to the fact that this is one more year with paying for the pool. So, I'm good. It's just, and it, those are things we definitely need to, especially with Mr. Pool's report. Those are de things we definitely need to uh, uh, get out of the agreement. But we're not necessarily honoring them anyways right now. So, Councillor Gray. Two points. The first is in relation to uh, Councilor Moria's suggestion. The problem with that is that you can't. We've complained mightily on a number of occasions about people unilaterally changing <laughs> agreements, and, and for us to unilaterally change the agreement seems to be um, hypocritical and, and just wrong. Um, I, I think we have. Well, to well that's not what I should just. No, no, I know. I, I understand what you're saying. It's just it's a negotiation. Um, the set, there's actually there's three points. The second is, um, should we not just have management meet with their management and, and find out what it is that we should be doing and set some groundwork? But like shouldn't we? Shouldn't that be part of this process? And and the third is, uh, my concern is this: it isn't. Uh, I, I don't disagree with Council Delorier, but I agree with Councillor Morio. I'm, I'm concerned that. We're going to get to um, June. Now it's farming season. We haven't got time to meet. Then there's something else in July, and people are away, and and then we're in harvest, and, and we'll be till next year, and then we're going to be back in this same boat. And there are some advantages to that. I, I can see that, but for me, I would like to see us start getting a better handle on wide range of, of things and get them done, as opposed to. Um, ad hoc things and so if if we if the understanding is that it won't be renewed again um fair enough or if we said i, I actually wrote down that we should have a deadline of and i said june 30th or to finalize a new agreement uh, in which case it would be terminated something like that because I, I really think we have to get on with these discussions so i think two parts firstly i think management should do the preliminary work on that and secondly i think we have to have a deadline um, for resolution of a new agreement, failing which the agreement will turn expire, and so, uh, and I'm prepared. I agree with uh, uh, Councillor Deloria has much more experience than I on this. So if he says it's going to take at least six months, fair enough. So let's set the deadline as October the first um, that we have a new that we are to negotiate an agreement by October the first, failing which the agreement will expire December the thirty first, twenty twenty, and won't be extended. 
Now, for the did we want to add that into the resolution first, or the mover and the seconder? Or okay with putting a deadline into this res resolution? We mover and seconder. Miss Hankelman, I need your help for that. So one. White. No, I'm okay with that. Councillor White. You're okay with that, setting a deadline to October 1st, 2020? To have negotiated a new, an ex, a new agreement or an extend. I mean, it may be with the negotiation will be will extend it, but to have something in place that's been negotiated and discussed so that the issues that the school raises and others are raised can be addressed. Ms. Hankelman, you're updating that for me. So we want them to expire December 31st, but we have to discuss them by October 1st? We're approving an extension for the year 2020 that a new agreement must be negotiated and executed by October the 1st, 2020, or the two agreements will expire and may not be extended on December the 31st, 2020. Councilor Morio. We can also change that. Please. And I agree with uh, Councilor Gray is that I don't see any reason why administration can't yeah. do some of the okay. ordinary legwork on that. Yes. Find out right. what's totally like agreeable already and just bring the sticking points uh, as the year gets, gets by and as events gets, gets going to get busier and busier. So I don't see why both councils as a whole each meet to right. Either discuss, way. but the get the, the basics done in a draft or something and then the, the sticking points, yeah. um, if any, um, for us to review as a group. But I agree. I, however, we do it. I, I just want to. What I don't want is another one of these. You're good to go, Miss Inkelman. Okay. Three year odysseys. I'll read that resolution. Um, whereas fire protection and purchase service agreements with the muni municipality of Minnetonas Bozeman have a termination date of December 31st, 2019. And whereas the councils have been unable to meet to discuss new agreements, therefore be it resolved that the town of Swan River extend both agreements to December 31st, 2020, as long as new agreements negotiated by October 1st, 2020. Not perfect wording, but it's good enough. Um, all right, uh, further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. Uh, I move to approve the accounts. One moment. <laughs> 9.1. Resolve that the accounts as follows be hereby approved for payment. General ac account check numbers 25747 to number 25838 for a total of $163,250.46 and payroll account check numbers 4625 to number 4630 for a total of $107,979.83 $107, to be approved for payment. Moved by Councillor Gray, second by Councillor Mario. Further discussion? None whatsoever. All in favor? It's carried. And we have one item here for in camera. Resolve that pursuant to section 152.3 of the Municipal Act, Council go into committee and close the meeting to the public. Moved by Councillor Morio, second by Councillor White. All in favor? Carried. Resolved that this meeting of council now adjourn at 9, 8.58 p.m. Moved by Councillor White, second by Councillor Friesen. All in favor? Oh. Thank you very much, everyone.